we are looking at uh, chapter number 4 that is introduction to html so html is hypertext markup language it's a language it is a tag based language and you can make a document like you make uh, ms word document so it's just a document which is suitable for the web browser or for the internet web so this is hypertext markup language and uh, as i said that you make a web page out of HTML and there are web browser on which you can put these put these web pages and from a browser you can access this right so this um, web browser can contain the web pages which are made made on HTML and now this HTML pages can be accessed intra through intranet or internet both ways it is possible so HTML was founded by the group which is called as WWWC or W3C, normally we call it World Wide Web Consortium in 1990. HTML overview, who invented it? We know that the father of WWW is Tim Berners-Lee and HTML was invented in November 1990 and the credit goes to Tim Berners-Lee only. The purpose was to gain access and to transform exchange read and a kind of cooperation for the research document so html is a uh, not the first invention actually it's an improved version of sgml that is standard generalized markup language so this sgml was a meta language that is it is capable of creating other language this is a general purpose language which was essentially made to define and create descriptive markup language what tools do we need for HTML? First of all, we need an editor. It can be anything. It can be Notepad. It can be Notepad plus plus. It can be Word. Any any text editor will will do. And you have to have a web browser in order to see that web page. So this these uh, HTML pages has tag and attribute. As we just said, W3C that is World Wide Web Consortium. It has already given or it has laid down certain standards for building the HTML language and a W3 is a tag based language. So a tag is a special kind of uh, you can say angle brackets or tag is placed inside this angle bracket. Whatever is placed inside this angle bracket is known as a tag. Tag that is why it is tag based language and this the content which you write here that is the the it is it is it has a special word it has a special command or the direction to the web browser what needs to be shown depending upon what is given inside that angle bracket it can be in uppercase it can be in lowercase so this is a tag and this as we just said we have a tag we start with a tag and then we end with a tag means you have to give a tag say i give bold i want say i am writing html here I want whenever the browser come across this line it needs to be shown in bold and this is the end of the bold means this is the ending so you have a backslash so every tag is supported by or has to have a closing tag but there are other tags also we will call it as empty tags which don't requ require this second one so what this uh, thing is doing or this instruction is doing it is indicating or directing the web browser to show the HTML which is written inside this tag to be bold, right? So we start with uh, the HTML. The HTML page is known how how the browser is going to know that it is a it is actually an HTML page. So every HTML page starts with this tag HTML. And it ends last line will be the backslash HTML inside the angle bracket. And every tag, along with what it directs to the web page, it has its attribute, it has its properties, it has its value. The element is the combination of the start tag, the text, and the end tag. So, this is a proper element because we have a start tag, we have end tag, and we have a content inside. So this is body you see in uh, the HTML page is divided into two parts first is the head part the other part is the body part. 
So see, it is body is starting, but body has to end. In simple words, you can say you can equate uh, an element to a block, a tag to an instruction, or attribute of the property is to an, to an extension to an instruction. So what are the container of tags? See, this is one tag, and this is the container of this tag. Inside this also we have tags, and you can have multiple number of tags inside. So test nesting of tags are possible. This is the structure of HTML document. This is the basic structure of HTML document. This is HTML. The web browser will know that it is HTML. And this is the end of HTML. The web browser will know this is the end of the HTML. And then we have this head part. This is the first section, head part. And then uh, the second part is this one, which is the second section. We call it a body part. So we'll uh, learn about this just now. The first part, actually the head part, gives you the idea about the web page. It's, it's related to whole web page. But the body part is where you write your you write your content inside which web page needs to be seen. So this, this, these are two parts. You have to uh, very much know that there are two parts. One is the head part, one is the body parts. How to save the HTML document? You can write the HTML document in in any text editor. The only thing you have to do is either you save it as .html or .htm. There are other extension also. The web browser are able nowadays. The web browser are aware that various various extensions are there and they are capable enough to handle all the web pages. But for now, .html and .htm. This is how you are going to show your page or save your page. If you want to see any any HTML code of the any page in the browser, just go to view source and you'll see all the content which is uh, which is actually making that web page to happen. Containers and empty tag. Container tags are both ta those tags which starts and which needs to end. That is, as I said, I want to do some italic work. This content, say I say hi. I want this to be italic. So I say I and then we I have to use a backslash. This is a container tag because it is these two are containing hi. But there are empty tags. Empty tags means if you write br, br is for the for creating a line or, or a line break. So for that br, you don't require this br. You don't require this. You just say br and this will do. You don't have to write anything also. br means line break. Similarly, if you want to have a line, if we want to put a line in the web page, you do HR. This is HR, horizontal rule. This is also a, this is also an empty tag. Then we have command also, which is called as comment. But this comment will be ignored by the HTML. How to write it? This is a comment. Angle bracket followed by exclamation followed by two dash. Write anything here. This will be ignored by the HTML, but it needs to be an NT tag also. What? How does how does it end? Two dash in angle bracket. All these will be skipped or ignored by the web browser. So this body tag, which is the second section, there are two section: head section and body section of an HTML page. This body tag has background that is the whole web page background. This is BACK background. If you want to put something, some image on the background. Text is there. This specifies the color of the text in the document. Link will say the color of the link. If you have any hyperlink, when you click, it will take you to some other page. That is the link. A link is the active link, which you have just, uh, which is act active and you can use it. V link means you have already clicked it. You have already clicked it and now you need, you need to revisit. You need to see that color. How to format the elements? When you want to write any web page, you see this this page, as you see here, this whole page is like a HTML page only. You see the paragraph, you see this heading, this is the upper heading, this is the lower heading, means the heading inside this. This is it's in some color, this is in some color. So for that, we need to format elements so that this, it generally what you write as a page, it should be shown as a page in the web page. So we start with the heading tag. Heading tag goes from H1 to H6. H1 is the largest, H6 is the smallest. 
So H1, this is the largest font followed by all the large font, larger font, medium, large, medium, small, smaller and smallest. So when you actually run this code H1 to H6, you will see the size of the code and these are decreasing, these are in the decreasing order. Then we have a font tag. Font tag is the style of the text you want to write. So font tag also has some attribute like the face, what type of font you want, size, what is the size of the font, it ranges from minus 7 to plus 7. What is the color of the tag, uh, the text you want? So this is how a simple example I can give you. Uh, font face, this is book Antica and this is case insensitive, you can write it anyway. Then this is the font color, red will come in this color, green will this and blue will come in blue color. Then this content because it is given inside font size plus 5. So the regular text it will increase plus 5 point. And this regular, regular this is also regular but it will decrease minus 3 point. As you see the result, this is the result. These are the colors and these are the plus 5 and minus 3. Uh, you can say re in the incarnation of what you have given in your code. So this you can nest also if you want to give this all these in different color this is the way. Now entering paragraph text on your web page. So this is a paragraph see this paragraph we have started and paragraph has also one one important property which is called as send the alignment. This is center you can make it left right. So you started with P you have said that font size should be plus 4 and you said the paragraph is centered. This is the content inside your paragraph. So, this is paragraph starting, paragraph end. So, please listen to me that this uh, paragraph slash p ending is in nowadays it is very optional. You can just skip it also. So, this is now centrally aligned paragraph stuff. The center tag. Sometimes it may not be possible to use align attribute again and again along with the tag. So, what you can do is you can use nested form of center tag once and use other tags inside the opening and closing center tags. So here what we have done, we have started with the center and we have ended with the center and then all the things which are coming inside will be in coming center. Whether it be some font, some break, some horizontal rule, means this line will come, this will give you, give you a blank space or a line break. So this is a paragraph you, you, have, you have given, this is the end of paragraph, this is the end of font. So as you see the result, everything is coming in, in, in the centrally aligned form. This is a horizontal line, this is the BR break. Now you can do the bold, italics and underline. You want to do the bold, use B, italic for I, this U for underline. So this, uh, you can do like this, you can start with a heading and say italic, this content will be get italic. This is italic inside but it is outside bold so it will be bold and italic. You see this is these are the result bold italic and the previous one. So these are all the various uh, you know list of tags used in, in this content and we'll see about this in later discussion also. Heading h3 tag this is font Arial. Then we have uh, the font which is plus 2 of the regular size this is the font color. This is alignment of right, the paragraph will come aligned right, this is center, this is bold, this is italic. So let us summarize what we have learned. World Wide Web Consortium or W3C has given a standard or set of standard while building the HTML language. The basic structure of HTML doc document is divided into two parts. One is your head, the other is the body. The container tag has both the start and end tag. HR is another empty tag which is horizontal rule, BR is also one of the tag which is empty tag. So this gives you horizontal rule, BR gives you the line break. We have heading from H1 to H6 and the size decreases. A paragraph can be written as the web document, you use the P tag. The bold italic and underline are those tags that help in changing the style of the font. So this is all about this discussion on introduction to HTML. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.